Hello and welcome to another How to Code Well web chat. My name is Peter Fisher. Today we're going to talk about the toxicity amongst programmers when talking about different programming languages. So this is the finger pointing, the negativity amongst programmers. So the you know the the when when people say you're not a true programmer because you're doing this and that's not a true programming language because it doesn't do that and you can't class yourself as a programmer because you're using these tools and that framework and so forth the negative the negative impact that that can have with junior developers and um, new new developers coming on board learning programming for the first time asking the question what is the best programming language to learn what is the best tools and frameworks to uh, to start to use and they just get confronted with all of this negativity this toxicity amongst programmers and some of them are left unsure what to what to to do some of them just get very turned off and go somewhere else do something else um and some of them also feel, in my opinion, that uh, what they're doing isn't a true reflection of being a programmer. They can't actually truly justify and call themselves a programmer. Perhaps they get the imposter syndrome and just think that they are being shunned and shamed in doing what they're doing. Now, why is there this, uh, this negativity amongst programmers? Well, in my opinion, it boils down to the developer. If the developer feels that um, that uh, a new programming language or framework or tool impacts their their career or impacts their their development cycle um, in perhaps a negative way, um, then uh, then that can that can lead them to be quite guarded. So often people don't like change, um, and the thing is with the web, especially with the web and the, and, and mobile and so forth, trends happen, they come and go different frameworks come in and go and so forth. So there is this churn of new things coming in, new toys coming in. There is a group of people who just think that new things that come in are bad, um, which which is quite harmful in my opinion, and they're not embraced. So you've got that collection of people. You've also got a collection of purists who think that certain programming languages can only be classed as programming languages if they do, or if they adopt a follow, um, adopt uh, a certain structure. Maybe they have certain levels of access to the hardware and the memory management and so forth, very granular controls, and therefore that is a very pure programming language, and anything other than that cannot be classed as a programming language. Again, that is quite harmful to junior devs, um, in my opinion. So the problem I see is that there isn't really the, the question of um, the follow up question doesn't get asked to junior developers or people who are learning programming from the start. That question that doesn't get asked is what is it that you wish to achieve? Um, what is the project that you're working on? What is the thing that you want to build? Because there are certain programming languages, there are certain tools, there are certain frameworks that are tailored to certain applications, certain tasks. So, for example, you wouldn't be writing um, uh, an e-commerce framework or you wouldn't be using, sorry, you wouldn't be building an e-commerce website um, with, say, just a blog um, framework you would be using maybe something tailored towards e-commerce. I'll give you an example of um, of where this uh, negativity can lie with uh, programming uh, languages. So, for example, you've got the you've got Xcode on one side and you've got Android on the other, and um, and so they make uh, obviously they make mobile applications, but above that you've got this thing called cross-platform, and cross-platform basically allows you to develop um, the application using a single language that can get compiled down to the native um, native counterparts, so the native uh, iOS and Android counterparts. And you would use something like JavaScript to do that. I'll give you an example of one. Um, so in the past, I've made uh, a couple of applications for iOS and Android using something called AlloyJS, which is a JavaScript framework um, and it, it's used by uh, Appcelerator. So Appcelerator offers you the ability to compile down um, uh, JavaScript code, essentially, into native Android and iOS um, counterparts. The, the issue I've noticed, though, is that the un some Android developers, some Xcode developers, do not like 
Alloy JS because they feel like it's um, coming onto their territory. They feel like their their toes are being stepped on in a, in a, in a little bit. And regardless of what the application is, the question never get ar- gets asked of what is the application. Regardless of that question, the opinion is never to use those that kind of tool. Well, it's worked out wonders for me in the past because I was able to access the camera, I was able to use a barcode scanner, I was able to access Bluetooth and so forth. And the applications that I was building really boiled down to some very basic data entry forms. And you would like use the camera and attach the, a photo to that and then send that information off, off send that data off to an API whenever you've got connectivity. So I wasn't using any hardcore graphics. There was no mobile games or anything. There was no 3D animations or anything like that. It was basically a series of forms um, that needed to use the camera and the Bluetooth to connect to other devices. Alloy.js was perfect for that because you could use the local storage and you could just, you know, you could store the stuff and post it up whenever you've got network connection. But again, you would see the 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 alloy J, the sorry the Android developers and the um, the Xcode developers just just um, regardless of what the application is, just saying that you shouldn't do it at all. You should just build the um, the thing in Xcode or build the thing in iOS. You get this as well with with PHP and Python, where um, Python devs, some of them at least, don't like PHP, and some PHP devs don't like Python. Um, but when they're used together, they can really make the application sing, in my opinion. My blog has two, um, ha- has both Python and PHP in it. Obviously, it's in the blog is in WordPress, and that's in PHP, of course, which is a fantastic uh, framework for building blog app, blog websites. But there is a a series of Python um, scripts that run in the background that can pull. Um, the uh, the YouTube API um, data and bring back the videos and create a series of files that, that is then passed off through PHP and into WordPress. So I'm using two languages on the website and there's no there's no issue there that, that it works very well. Um, and the point I'm I'm kind of trying to make here is that different programming languages and different frameworks are tailored to, to specific tasks. So, for example, you wouldn't be using a web, a programming language that is very heavy in object orientation, if you are just looking to uh, build something which is just procedural and scripted, um, and vice versa. But the thing is that that question never really gets asked to these people, to these 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 newbies, these people who are looking to learn programming from the start. They don't know which way to turn. All they get is bombarded with these conflicting messages of what is and what isn't a good programming language, and you know why they shouldn't use this programming language over that programming language, and so forth. The question of what is it that you wish to achieve never gets asked, in my opinion, or rarely gets asked. And that, I feel, is quite uh, damaging to the community. Bringing new people on uh, to, to, to be programmers um, should be ta- should be an enjoyable experience. They shouldn't be bombarded with all of this uh, conflicting messages. Anyway, I'm going to leave it there, but do let me know. I'll be interested to find out if uh, you've ever had this experience. If you've learned programming and you feel like you're not a true programmer because of the opinions that other people have, other programmers have, if you've been turned off from learning programming at all because of the uh, the, the toxicity that I'm talking about, or if you think I'm completely um, uh, over-exaggerating this issue. But um, let me know. I'll be interested to hear from you. Put it in the comment section below, and I'll uh, and I'll uh, get back to you as soon as I can. Like the video if you found it helpful, um, and do subscribe to pick up the next web chats, as well as the tutorials that I've been publishing every week. Thanks again. Happy coding. I'll see you again next week. Cheers. Bye.